One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Let me be clear, I don't consider myself a history buff. However, there are certain eras and events that do fascinate me. One such example is the moon landing. July 20, 2019 will actually mark the 50th anniversary of this historic event. With such a significant milestone on the horizon, as well as the recent release of First Man, I thought this would be a good time to talk about one of my favourite Australian films, The Dish. I should probably note I'm not generally a big fan of Australian cinema. I find a lot of it either cringeworthy or depressing. However, this film is a notable exception. Based on true events, the film recounts the pivotal role played by the Parkes Radio Telescope, i.e. the titular dish, in the Apollo 11 mission, in particular the moon landing itself. Though the story is set in the Australian town of Parkes, much of the film was actually shot in the neighbouring town of Forbes, as it hadn't changed as much in the intervening 30 years, and therefore closer matched the required 60s aesthetic. However, all of the exterior shots of the dish itself were shot on location in Parks, with the facility being closed for three weeks for filming. Having visited the dish myself, I can say it's an even more impressive sight than it appears on screen. The rest of the film does a great job authentically recreating the 60s, including one or two of its less PC aspects. And do the people in India get to watch it? Yeah, but all on the one telly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Far too serious, darling. This is very much a character-driven film. A lot of the drama, comedy and heart is derived from their various interactions and dynamics. The dialogue and performances are very natural throughout. Please don't call me lazy in front of the ambassador. Huh? What do I care if some big wig yank says that I love my wife? <laughs> <laughs> now, Bob, the blue or the lemon? The yellow. Lemon! In fact, the writing is often so witty that several viewings are required in order to fully appreciate it. More tea, Prime Minister? Oh, yes. Lovely. The most notable cast members are Sam Neill and Patrick Warburton. Warburton really plays against type. The actor is best known for his comedy roles and voice work. Is it weird that we're in a group text with our friend's wife, but not our friend? No, what's weird is that your bitmoji can walk. I'm allowed to have legs in the phone world! However, here he is far from the comic relief. And does the computer move the dish? Mitch does that. Then the master. I mean, I'm afraid we're going to have to get back to work. Thank you very much for the refreshments. Oh, it was my pleasure. One thing I've always found odd is the fact that Billy Brown is credited simply as the Prime Minister. Despite the name of said Prime Minister being readily available information. Do you know who was on the phone just then? No, sir. The President of the United States, Nixon. So they could mention Nixon by name, but not John Gorton? Why? The soundtrack consists of a number of era-appropriate songs, which are used to great effect. The film opens with a montage of archival footage set to The Real Thing by Russell Morris. This not only establishes the historical setting, but also sets the tone of the film. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this bikini and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It also includes one of the best uses of classical gas in film. comedy. However, it is a very funny film. Imagine the Earth is basketball. This will be good. And on top of the basketball is, um, what's the thing you put the pump into? The hole. Yeah, but it's got, got a name. Oh, the valve. Well, <laughs> let's say the valve is Goldstone, and on the other side is another valve. Yeah, basketball's no. only had one valve. Oh, well, well, something's got two valves. Tuba? No, it's got to be round. Tambourine. But that doesn't have valves. Coconut. Merch which is exactly what you'd expect from the filmmakers behind the castle. The humour is often very Australian. What'd they pick up? Turns out it's the largest radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. 
What's it doing in the middle of a sheep paddock? The comedy is well balanced by genuine emotion and heart. While undeniably Australian, the film explores the international atmosphere of July 1969. It explores the Apollo 11 mission as a worldwide event, capturing the awe and wonder experienced by many who lived through it. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour, liftoff on Apollo 11. A lot of fun is had with the differences between Australian and American culture. Oh, beauty. You'll love this bloke. Fly me to the moon, let me swing among the stars. He's from Brisbane. Really? He's a little like Frank Sinatra. Hmm, if not better. Particularly with Patrick Warburton's character, NASA representative Al Burnett. You treat us like a pack of galahs. That's a kind of parrot. The film is certainly accessible to international audiences. One of the biggest criticisms of the film is its historical accuracy. While based in fact, certain elements of the story were embellished or exaggerated to create further drama and tension. One major obstacle faced by the characters in the film never actually occurred in reality. The involvement of both the Honeysuckle Creek and Goldstone stations are almost entirely omitted from the film. While these are legitimate criticisms and should be taken into consideration when watching the film, the need to streamline the focus of the narrative is also understandable. I believe the film is true to the spirit of the events. When visiting the set, those who actually worked at the dish back in the 60s described the experience as being like stepping back in time. Despite its inaccuracies, this film did make me aware of my home country's involvement in one of the most significant ventures of the 20th century. It will be one of the proudest moments in Australia's scientific history. Yeah. Something I had been previously unaware of. Furthermore, it encouraged me to look into the actual events myself. It presents an incredible piece of human history from a unique, and for many, new perspective. If you have seen this Aussie gem, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you actually lived through the moon landing itself, I'd love to hear your memories of that time.